So here I have uh, pale yellow again. And I'm going to put that over here. And I'm pressing quite hard. Because I want this yellow to not only cover the hills, but also the valleys. And then we will come to this one, Castle Earth. And this one will get a very, very light touch. And I think over here there should be another yellow spot. And for some reason I lost that one in... I'm not sure, is it in the drawing? Or yeah, I think it is in the drawing, but I just lost it. Well, that's okay. No two butterflies are exactly the same, so... And I'm not, I stopped trying to like photocopy things when I'm drawing because I don't think that is, that's not what, what gives me joy, doing exactly copying a picture, although I find that uh, artists who are doing that, they make the most beautiful works of art, but for me, it's a bit uh, too much, too precise. So now, Now there are lighter areas here and they are roughly above these yellow spots. So I'm going to see if I can make that visible. Let's move to black. Need to sharpen that one too. I must say I'm now wearing these reading glasses. It's so much easier for my eyes. It's a lot more It's more relaxed, I have to say. So Now I keep a light touch. Yeah, going back to the castle earth. And as you can hear, there's quite some texture on this uh, Strathmore 
500 series paper. I think I, I will take this paper with me on vacation because it's, it should work very well for mixed media. So I think I'm going to try that. I can use it then for anything. That might be nice. Now I want to do a little bit more work here on the uh, the background and I've been thinking about this background because back coloring backgrounds is one of my favorite things but it's also um, um, it can be a complicating factor to your drawing so I really must figure out how large I want this drawing to be maybe I should just do it like this and I know a lot of people who are using uh, solvents to um, to speed up the process of coloring backgrounds and, and the larger areas. This is pink matter, it's all polychromos. And here I have a luminance, spring green, very light green. And here's another luminance. Oh, that's a different, <laughs> very different, a difficult. Anthra we know it pink, yeah. And here I have uh, Castle Earth again. I'm going to put a little bit of it over here. But I will leave the real detailed work to the Polychromos pencil. And then I'm picking that black Polychromos. And polychromos pencils are less opaque than the uh, Pablo pencils and also luminance. So I have found that when you cover something with, uh, with polychromos, what's underneath always shines through a little bit. Well, not always, but if you keep a very a light touch, then uh, and that will give a much richer black tone than when I would have done this with only 
a black pencil. So now there is blue and there is brown, different types of black, that's much better. You don't need all these expensive pencils to do this project though. You know, I'm now using the top of the pencils that I have. Faber-Castell Polychromos and then Garandache Luminance and Pablo. All high quality pencils. But if you have another pencil brand, that's completely fine too. But for the detailed work, I really recommend a harder pencil lead. So you could think about, um, if you don't have polychromos, you can try Erogeton, Prismacolor, and then not the Prismacolor Premieres, they are very soft, but uh, uh, Prismacolor, I believe it's called Very Thin, and there are several brands like Derwent who have uh, harder pencils as well. Pro Color is quite hard, but uh, the studio pencils of Derwent are very precise as well. This looks nice. Now let's see if I can work the yellow areas a little bit more. Now I want some a little more color, but I will go very slow, so I'm picking a very light tone again, primrose. And I will slowly work my way towards the final color and this is not much it's not that I want to I not I want to make things darker but I want more saturation and I I really must check check double check whether I'm picking the right colors so I'm checking the pencil next to the um let's use this brush i keep the pencils next to reference photos that i have and then if the pencil is darker than the reference photo then i will definitely not use it not in this phase i've learned my lesson Last year I painted this beautiful butterfly and I screwed things up because I made the yellow way too dark and uh, well that was uh, not very nice. But it was a good lesson. Now I have another very light yellow here, and this is a Prismacolor pencil, Deco Yellow. Let's take a look. Does this work? 
Now with Prismacolor I am always a little bit cautious because it tends to seal the paper and it won't allow other colors to to layer on top of it and uh, that's not very nice. And here I have another Luminance pencil, Naples Ochre, very light also. Why is my brush? And I think it would be great to use this yellow in the background as well. That will help pull things together. This is Naples yellow or Naples ochre. Naples ochre. This is really going to help, I think. Okay, I'm not happy with this green shade. I actually like this much better. So I'm going to uh, change things. Now my first hunch was to pick this one, Malachite Green, but then I will create an odd symmetry in the background. And I don't think I should do that. So I think I need to go to do something else. What, hap what, what happens? Goodness gracious. That's not... Uh, juniper green. Sometimes I get slop sloppy with my English. And you know, I can re I really cannot afford <laughs> getting sloppy with my English. Because it's not, I, I cannot do it on automatic pilot, you know, autopilot. I need to think to be aware, stay focused.
we had a uh, secretary of foreign affairs, I believe, in the Netherlands a couple of years ago. And that guy was able to speak four or five languages fluently and without an accent. I found that uh, astonishing. And I'm sure it's about practice. Practice, practice, practice. A lot of it is about practice, not all of it, I think. So our uh, holiday destination this year is Switzerland. And here I have a color called uh, Meda. But the German name is so beautiful, Krablak. <laughs> Our destination is Switzerland this year and uh, we will uh, hang out with uh, some family members over there. And one of them is my, is my niece and uh, She is now 15 years old and she's learning uh, different languages in school and she decided uh, that she liked the German language a lot so she decided <laughs> to um, to keep that in hers. I don't know the English terms for that but here you know, you go to uh, elementary school and then you go to, well, a follow-up where you get math and physics and English and French and German and well, economic stuff, all sorts of uh, things. And then after a couple of years, you have to choose because you cannot take all those, um, take everything with you towards your, do you call that graduation? Well, you cannot graduate in everything here. So she decided to uh, let go of physics chemistry, stuff like that, but she decided to keep um, to keep German. I must check this. Oh, I really love that. I absolutely love that. This over here. So we are visiting uh, the German-speaking part of Switzerland, so she can now uh, practice her German. And here in the Netherlands, there are there is more and more. Uh, English teaching in elementary school but it gives a little bit of a problem because um, the level of English that the children learn in a lot of elementary schools is not sufficient for uh, the follow-up the follow-up schools so you know 
when you go to, uh, well, call it high school. Um, in high school, they uh, they th they think you the, the kids can speak English mu much better than a lot of them actually do. So that causes a lot of uh, that causes trouble. And English is getting more and more important here in the Netherlands. Juniper green. And you don't necessarily have to go to school to learn it. My mother, you know, she is 75 years old almost. Almost. And she had English lessons 60 years ago in school. But back then it was quite... It was very limited. And... Uh, like 10, 15 years ago, she decided that it would be very important for her to improve her English. So what she did, she put on television, and not the Dutch, um, no Dutch programs, but she put on BBC. And she put her iron, ironing board in front of the television. And she started ironing in front of the television with a um, dictionary close to her. A dictionary close to her. And then here in the Netherlands, and I'm sure you in many countries, you can choose um, subtitling for deaf people on your television so, so she put on the subtitling for deaf people so she could not only hear the words being spoken but also read them and then she could look them up in her dictionary and now 15 years later um, she doesn't need a dictionary anymore she doesn't need subtitling she's perfectly able to understand anything I'm going back with this Kraplak Meda. Now, uh, a sister in law of mine, she's also uh, working on improving both her own English and also the English of her children because she. Uh, strongly feels that um, knowing your languages is such a ben benefit, especially English here in the Western world, in Western Europe. But uh, in a couple of weeks we will be going uh, to Switzerland and uh, I will be able to uh, practice my uh, German again. And my German sounds... Uh, <laughs> it, I speak German with a huge accent, I have to admit. A huge accent. Here I have sky blue. But actually, I really don't care. The people in Germany and Switzerland and Austria, they uh, are so kind and nice. And most of the time they understand what I'm saying. And most of the time I understand what they are saying. So, you know, it's good. Here I have Pink Medalik. This is the light version of the Kraplak, you know, here's Kraplak Rosa Pink is the, the German name. So, yes.
Wow. I really like this. <laughs>